Hello, in this video we're going to explore how we can shatter any object in UE5 into thousands of pieces and how we can do it manually or just have them like get thrown from the sky and break. So we, I have the normal third person uh, template project in Unreal Engine 5.1 and it would work in Unreal Engine 5 as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a static mesh from Quixel Bridge and you can bring any static mesh. It doesn't matter where you take it from. Um, anything would work here. So I'm just going to go into 3D assets and I'm going to search for barrel and see what we come up with. And I'm just going to take this one right here, which I have used before. So I'm going to just <clears throat> choose medium quality. I'm going to add it to the project. You can also drag it onto the uh, scene as well. So once I have it, I'm going to drag it onto the scene and we have our barrel here. Now, the first step we need to do is I'm going to create a folder here for keeping stuff organized. And I'm going to call this geometry collections. And you're going to see why in a second. And what you want to do is choose your uh, static mesh. And then on the top left, you have selection mode. You want to change that into fracture. And you'll get these two windows that open up here. And before you actually start fracturing the object, you need to generate a new geometry collection. And the reason it's called a geometry collection is because when you actually shatter an object into many pieces, you get basically many pieces, right? And those are called a collection of geometry shapes. <clears throat> so you're going to click on new and we're going to go into our geometry collection folder. And I'm going to call this GC short for geometry collection and then underscore barrel. <clears throat> and then I'm going to create, create geometry collection. So once you have the geometry collection, you'll see a barrel um, kind of looks weird. The skin goes off of it, um, but that's fine. We'll fix it in a second. Uh, what you want to focus on is when you scroll down, you have this fracture options here. And these are the different ways you can actually destroy the object into many pieces. So you have the uniform method, which would break um, every piece into similar pieces. You have the cluster, for example, which, um, as you can see in the diagram, uh, it's not the exact same pieces. Some are smaller, some are bigger. You have radial, where you actually make it shatter from a, a focal point, and you can change where that focal point is, and you can explore the other ones as well. So for now, I'm going to focus on the uniform method, where I want them to actually to get destroyed into similar pieces. And once you choose uniform, you get this window here where you get all the different options. Now, I want to bring your attention to a few of them. You have explode amount, which kind of um, tells it uh, when it when when it actually fractures, do you want it to explode? Like, uh, you know, how much the pieces get thrown uh, away from each other? So you can change this and play around and experiment. I'm going to like set it for 0 0.2, for example. Um, and then the, the second important thing is the min Verona sites and max Verona sites. And this is basically the algorithm it uses to split the things into different pieces. And over here, you can tell it how many pieces you want it to be. Um, so you can choose a minimum and a maximum, and it will choose something in between those two. Um, just keep in mind, the more pieces you do, the more resource intensive it gets. So depending on what you're making, uh, keep that in mind. Um, there's other options as well, which you can play around with. Um, to be frank, I haven't played around with all of them, uh, but these are the two ones that I, which I think are more important. So that's why I am mentioning them. So I'm going to choose 20 and 30. You can choose whatever you want. And once you have the uh, settings that you want, you want to click on fracture and take a look over here, right? So this is my geometry collection. Right now, there's nothing inside of it. There's just a single one, which is our barrel. As soon as I hit fracture, um, look at what happens. As you can see, so many different ones are created. As you can see, there's 20 different pieces that were created. So it shows the minimum in our case. And the cool thing is, um, once you fracture it, you can also fracture it again, and it fractures your the thing that you fractured once into more uh, pieces. So if I hit it again, you can see it creates much more different fractures. All right, so once you have that, uh, we're ready to actually um, see this in action. So first, let's talk about how we get our skin back here. So when, if you have your GC barrel chosen here, um, search for bone. And there's an option which says show bone colors. If you um, uncheck it, um, your barrel will go back to normal. Okay, so I'm going to choose it again. Now, the other thing I want to show you guys, which is very important, is let's go into our geometry. Let's go back to selection mode. 
and let's zoom out. Let's go into our geometry collection and double click on the um, asset we created. I'm going to bring it here and make it full screen. So there's a two different th um, options here that I want to emphasize and you can check all the other ones as well. The first one is mass. So you can see that there's a mass here and it's 2,500 kilograms. And right, everything in um, Unreal Engine, if you simulate physics, it uses physics, right? So we need, we need a little bit of physics knowledge here. So this is 2,500 kilograms. Let's keep that in mind. The other thing that I want to um, bring your attention towards is under the damage category, if you open the damage threshold, this is how much force is needed for the barrel to completely break into all the different pieces. Um, this is the amount of force that um, would relatively break the barrel and this will only break it a little bit. So these damage thresholds is important because um, in order to break this barrel, this is the amount of force that's needed. So for example, the mass of our um, barrel is 2,500 and the physics equation, if you don't know, if you actually drop a barrel and um, it's mass, t mass times gravity times the height that you threw it. So in our case, um, if I take my barrel high enough um, and then drop it, so let me go into the game, let me choose my barrel here and let me take it up. So right now um, you would think that this would break, but it's not because 2,500 times 10 is only um, 25,000 and it doesn't go across the threshold. So if I hit play, you see that nothing happens, right? And um, you see a very small piece break because it, it breaks the um, 5,000 threshold, which we saw here, right? But it doesn't break this one and it doesn't break this one. So how do you fix that? You need to play around with these, right? So if you want your barrel to completely break, what I can do here is I can, there's two things I can do. I can either increase the mass um, so that it, when I multiply it by 10, it breaks the 50, the uh, 500,000. So if I make it 250,000, um, if you multiply this by 10, it goes above this. So let me save this and let's go back. Now look at what happens. You see how it actually broke into many pieces like that? And th that's basically what I wanted to show you there is that you, you need to play with those um, variables to get your ideal um, break that you want. So you have two ways, either increase the mass or increase the amount of damage you need to do. All right, cool. So with that out of the way, now we have a barrel that kind of falls and you get all these different effects. And it's pretty cool because you can actually drag a bunch of them onto the into the world and then you can actually um, you know have them drop from really high up and um, make them like you know make a cool world where like stuff is falling and you have to like move inside of it right so it's pretty cool you can make it explode further by in increasing that explosion amount by making these heavier or by increasing the threshold and it will explode into a bigger pieces but that's pretty cool where you can actually create these barrels and you can see our character can move on top of it so with that let's move to the other uh, thing that i wanted to talk about and that is how we can actually break these barrels manually so we don't want to always have to take them into the sky in order for them to break how can we actually um, create a field where we can um, do this manually and break it. So in order to do that, we're gonna go into our content folder and I'm going to right click and create a new folder for blueprints. And we're gonna go into blueprints and we're gonna create a new blueprint. Uh, and in order to break these, we need to create force to break these stuff, to break that damage threshold. The way you do that in Unreal Engine is you create a field system actor which you'll find here. Okay, so you choose the field system actor here and press select and it'll create a blueprint for you. And I'm gonna call it um, BP for blueprint and I'm gonna call it field system. All right, so let's open the field system and let's see what we can do with it. So what we wanna do here is we wanna add, the first thing we wanna do is add a radial fall off. So what is a radial fall off? A radial falloff is basically um, creating a force in a circular manner. So imagine like a um, dark hole or something like that where you actually you put it somewhere and it pulsates energy. Um, in the case of a dark hole, it kind of sucks you in. But in our case, we wanted to exert uh, force um, outside in a circular manner. 
So what we, we can do, we add this radio fall off. We add it here into the um, into the event into, into the um, event graph, and then we drag from the radio fall off, and we call set radio fall off. So once we have the radio fall off, we have a bunch of options. The first one is the field magnitude. So this one you need to ensure is more than the uh, threshold of your GC barrel. So in our case, it's 500,000. So we need more than 500,000. So I'm going to set it to 1 million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the minimum range and maximum range is um, it randomizes this field and it's going to multiply it by these numbers here. So I'm going to set it between 0 0.8 and one and the reason i chose 0 0.8 is because i want my minimum to still be more than the the threshold that i have for my barrel so it always breaks um, and then you can also choose the sphere radius so how far do you want the uh, sphere to pulsate so i'm just going to choose 100 for now and you also need to choose the position you want the sphere to be um, the, the pulsating sphere and I'm going to put this at wherever we put this um, blueprint that's where I want it to be so I'm going to say get actor location all right so we have the radio fall off now how do we actually add it to the field system there's a function called add transient field that you can use here and you need to give it the uh, radio fall off so you can drag it into the field node and it also has a bunch of different uh, physics types. In our case, we want it to be an external force. So as we said, we want it to pulsate outwards. And that's the type you need to choose. There's all these other ones that you can uh, play around with as well. And you also want to enable the field because we want it to be active. So once we hit enable, we can drag from the begin play and drag it into this. And now we have a sphere that pulsates energy um that we can put into our game so i'm going to hit compile now if you go back to your game i have three barrels here now look when we actually hit play um and look at our barrel nothing is happening we have those three pieces falling off just because of the weight of the barrels and i can actually hit into the barrels as well which is pretty cool i can throw them off now let's do something but let's add um let me bring my character a bit back here and so we can see the barrels so what i want to do is i want to grab our bp field system put it into the game and i'm going to put it right next to i'm going to put it between the three barrels so that it pulsates energy so what should happen is whenever i hit play all these three should break since the radius is only 100 it didn't reach the third one as you can see but you can move it around, for example, or I can go into the field system and increase the radius. Maybe I see 100 isn't enough and I make it 200, for example, hit compile. Now when we hit play, you can see all three barrels are breaking. So that's how you actually exert force manually. We can take it a step further. So right now, the way we had to do it was not ideal where we have to like drag it manually and put it here. It would be cooler if the player could choose where the field kind of spawned so you can think of it as a, in a game where you would like hit the barrel with a sword and it would break or like you know you're playing a shooter game you shoot at the barrels it would break um so let's let's see how we can do that so if you go into the character if you go into the third person blueprints and open the bp third person character what we want to do is we want to allow the character to click and by left clicking they should be able to spawn the field node that we created so let's let's remove it from the event begin play so that it doesn't automatically um, break stuff and we're gonna um we're gonna create a new custom event and we're gonna call this add field for example and i'm gonna drag this into our add transient field so we don't want the to automatically create um autom for it to automatically start pulsating we want it to start pulsating whenever we call this function so i'm going to compile this i'm going to come back to the third person character and i'm going to choose um left click um uh, left mouse and i'm going to choose the left mouse button so this basically is you're saying it whenever we press the left mouse button i want it for, to do something so what do we want it to do we want it to generate the uh, the field system at the location that we clicked so let's do that so i'm going to take the 
get player controller because we want to see where the player clicked on the mouse and you do that through the player controller and there's a function called get hit result under chat under cursor by channel so you choose that one and basically what this does is wherever you, the player is moving their mouse um, it's going to draw a line and the first object that it hits that's where it's going to show us so if i home if i'm holding my mouse here it's going to draw a line and it's going to um, hit the floor and that's where it's going to spawn so i'm going to go back to the third person character and i'm going to get the hit result and i'm going to break it because i don't want the whole thing i just want the location and if you expand it you'll see all these different options here and what i'm really what i really care about is the location and you can also choose the impact point as well and what I want to do is I want to spawn the um, I want to spawn that actor that we created, which was a field actor. So I'm going to say spawn actor from class, and I'm going to choose our BP field system. Now that we have that, um, this is going to spawn that BP field system, and I want to give it the transform the location of where our, my mouse was, and then what we want to do is we want to um, call the function create field or what, what did I call it field let's see add field so there we go uh, under BP field system add field and this is the return value um, that we want okay so let's give it a go now what should happen is when I I'm going to remove this um, remove this BP field system that I added here, and now uh, I'm going to hit play. Now nothing is happening because we didn't spawn anything. So but if I oh you can't see the mouse cursor, so we need to fix that as well. So what we want to do is we can one way to do it is we can go to um, we can go back to the third person controller, and on event begin play. Um, after it does all of its things that it needs to do, we can get the player controller. And we wanted to show the mouse cursor. So we drag from here and we say show mouse cursor. And you should see set show, show mouse cursor. And then we're going to attach it here and hit the check mark. And now when we hit compile uh, and when we go back to the game, we hit play. Now we can see my mouse. So now if I go here, um, you can see that the barrels, nothing is happening. I'm going to click here and it's going to spawn a field and you should see all the barrels break, which is pretty cool. Now you can actually create a field. Now imagine if you add some particle systems to it, like an explosion or something like that, um, then you basically have a game mechanic that you can actually explore and it destroy any object that you see as long as you create a fracture for it. That sums up this video and thanks for watching.